So, that being said, Tracer, what should I talk about? What should I go through? What are some points? How do I play Tracer at a decent level? Um, what do I look out for? Well, there are five points that I'm going to give you that will make it so that you can easily break down a Tracer a little bit better. You can see, oh, what is this Tracer in my eyes really good? Or what is it that allows Tracers to be so dominant kind of thing, right? Or what can I do to be a dominant Tracer? So I'll have my five points here on the side. My left side, to be exact. Three, four, and five. All right. So number one, blink. Specifically, blink usage. So what I mean by this is the number there on the bottom right, your blinks, you need to look to manage this properly. Capture is using three right now to get out of the spawn, but realistically what I mean is during the fights, you need to make sure A, purpose. And instead of saying purpose, I'm gonna say why. Shorter word, easier to remember. Why are you using that blink? What's the purpose of that blink? Is there a reason for it or are you just blinking the blink, right? You want to make sure that you're using your, that blink cooldown efficiently for a real reason. Not just because, oh, it's so cool. I can go from point A to point B very fast. No. The other reason, B, aside from why are you using your blink usage, right, is how many do you have? Do you have another one coming up? Do you have two already in kind of like usage that you can utilize, right? Especially when recall is down, this is a very important point to know about your blinks. You want to make sure, and as like a little bit of an extension here, in mid fight, I'm like making this really small, like it might not even be eligible to read, but I'm hoping that you guys have fallen along pretty well. One and a half blinks. So why one and a half blinks? Simple. The reason why one and a half blinks is because I want to be able to at least have a blink to go to safety, go aggressive, but I also, as I go for that blink, I want to be able to have another blink almost ready instantly after that blink. So I don't need the blink already ready, I just need another blink coming up. And the reason why, and the reason for it is, again, you want it for safety, you want it just in case, you don't want to just blink instantly and then just be stuck in the middle of nowhere, especially when you have no recall, you need to play around the blink coming back up. Ashton C, thank you for the follow. Hope that uh, you're gaining a massive giga brain from uh, the knowledge that is being shared. If not, stay around in the stream and I'm sure you will uh, learn a thing or two. But thank you for coming, I appreciate it. Um, the, la the next thing that kind of comes down to it is just like mid fight, I talk about like blink usage and this is the harder part that people kind of don't really grasp really well. The other thing is just like, and yeah, no, I'll keep it like that because Y is a very good indication for that stuff. Next thing is I'll do this next, then I'll do that third recall. And we'll do A, B again. So recall usage is the next thing that I'd say is really important. A, why? Why am I using recall, right? What's the purpose of this recall? Did I use it to get HP back? Did I use it because I'm very close and dangerous enemy territory? Or did I just press it because I, I messed up? Like I thought something else was going to happen, yada, yada. Again, why, 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 why? We're always going back to this question of why with cooldowns. And again, it's very important that there's a good why, a good reason behind it. Because again, if it's a weak reason, such as I press E because um, Tracer is right on top of me. But if you have two blanks, you have full HP, and let's say that you had, I don't know, Anna, Anna pocketing you during that time. Why are you running away? Why are you recalling? That's a valuable tool. You shouldn't be wasting it. You have all these resources to help you, and you're instantly using a very powerful tool in your disposal. Second thing that I'll say in terms of recall usage, aside from why, is location. Location, location, location. Location is very important with recall usage. And now why is it important with recall usage? Simple. You can recall, and even though, yes, I said you should have this many blinks in your disposal, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're not going to be able to have that many blinks all the time. Maybe you'll just have one. Maybe you'll have half a blink coming up, right? So depending on where you recall, you could be in a really poor position, and that poor position makes it so that 
well, guess what? I'm going to die because I have no way to escape because I'm all the way in the back, right? So, again, location, location, location. Very, very important. Everteens, thank you for the follow. Hopefully, you're going to gain a massive giga brain, um, or you have been. If not, stay tuned. I'm sure you will learn a thing or two, but I appreciate you coming in, and thank you for the follow. Uh, glad to see you here. Okay, third thing. Then we're going to go through fourth, then we're going to do fifth. I will be a little bit faster with these points because these points are a little bit self-explanatory. Um, a little bit less explanation. Pulse bomb. Yes, building pulse bomb is really good. Getting kills with pulse bomb is really good. But A and B, again, looking at it. A, B. Super simple. A. I'll do it like this. Success. Percentage. Are you sticking people? Are you getting kills with people? Right? That's the big thing you have to understand. If you're able to get kills with this every single fight, you're a deadly tracer. Because no matter what happens, enemy teams have to be careful for you. Because you're going to make the fight 6v5 every single time you have that pulse. And you can. It's very possible to. A good example of a tracer that I've seen do that before, think about uh, contenders. Specifically, NA Gauntlet. I remember there was one specific tracer that kept just getting pulse bombs. And this guy was on ping as well. He got a pulse bomb kill every single fight. And he was able to turn fights just because of that alone, right? People like that are just incredible, right? And it's not just about the neutral play. It's about that pulse bomb as well. That's part of the reason, right? So sex, success potential is like a good part of this. Like how many kills can you get? How many things can you do with it? And then B comes down to, um, aside from success potential, it comes down to sticks is kind of what I'm going to say. Because you're not always going to be able to stick someone, right? But if you can consistently land sticks onto people, you're going to be in a very good spot. Remember, success isn't about just sticking all the time. Success is also about like just getting a kill. Maybe you lobbed it in and you got a kill, right? Because they're all grouped up together. But if you can land six consistently and you can have a good success rate in terms of like getting those kills, it turns out really, really well for you. Five and or four and five, sorry, are a little bit more of uh, secondary points, but still important. Tempo is for four and five is space manipulation. Um, fifth point is a little bit more, I would say a little bit more advanced in my eyes. But four is a little bit more of a primary thing that you should be looking at. Tempo, again, looking at this as A. No B in this one, second tempo. What tempo do you want to go, right? Some people have their tracers go first tempo, take the aggro so that their monkey or their ball or whoever else is diving with them can not take any aggression. Some like their tracers to go second tempo because they're trying to get massive value from the tracer, right? Maybe a one clip. Maybe they're going to be able to... Is that... <laughs> Sorry. Maybe they're going to be able to do, do a lot, right? Going forward into that. And by do a lot, I mean maybe they're going to be able to get a few kills, right? Maybe they're going to be untouched in the back line and become a very big problem, right? Aside from that... Tempo is mainly a subjective turn, and most of the time, for tracers that get very high value, they go second tempo because they're the DPS. They can stay alive for longer periods of time in the back line or within the mid fight because of the blinks, because of the recall, so they can stick on targets a little bit more. Space manipulation, not going to go into too much detail about that. Biggest thing that I'll tell you there is they're forcing people into positions that they don't want to be in. So for example, Ana, maybe Ana will start off in a very strong position with the team, and then maybe based off of tracer position, or not even tracer position, but based off the tracer shooting her, right? Or pressuring her, it will force the Ana to rotate or play in a space that is much more controlled, potentially from the gladiators, or potentially from whatever team you're playing against, right? You're changing or forcing certain characters or enemy heroes to go into spaces or rotate in ways that is very advantageous for your team but very disadvantageous for the enemy team right and that's it that's the five points for tracer that's the big thing uh that i would say that we should look at when we're looking at these tracer play for kevster 
we're going to look at a few maps. I'm going to kind of speed along and I'm going to see what I can do, just not just on this map, but also on maps where they played a little bit more dive oriented stuff. Uh, versatility of Tracer is nice. Differing styles, style change. 100%. I didn't even talk about style changes right now. I just talked about specifically Tracer herself, right? Uh, and style changes can pretty much go into tempo. Like tempo, how you play the tempo is very different, right? You could play a third tempo, which I didn't even talk about, which is much, much slower and play a lurking tracer and just finish off kills or force tracer duels when tracer is doing something else, right? There's a lot of different things you can do. Major Midget OW2, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully you gain a massive giga brain uh, as you're here. If not, stay tuned and thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Spell sent you over? Awesome. Fucking my dude. Excited to see him play with his team uh, in a little bit. Hello there. Thing. Slim. Oh my gosh. No, I'm not going to be able to say this name. Shinx. Shinx. Okay. I'm going to like try and then we'll go forward from here. Slim. Shinx. Knee. Shinx. Shinx. Shinx is like the best thing I got, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, you're growing a massive giga brain as you're kind of sitting there. Ready to go over and uh, hopefully you're having some fun. But something I will say, if any of you have questions as we go through, like feel free to ask and I'll try to answer to the best I possibly can. Slim Shay Knee. Okay, thank you, J thank you, thank you, thank you. But the name is taken unlucky. You are terrible with names. There's two things you're gonna learn about me left as we do streams. I'm terrible at pronouncing names is number one, and number two is I. Uh, I know a little bit about the Overwatch game. That's about it. That's the only two things that you'll learn about me as we go on with the stream. Okay. So we'll play at 0 0.5. Right now we see that Kevster and Kai are going towards this right side control. Kevster has to use his blank early or his recall early. And this is what I'm talking about going back to the blank point, right? Recall was used. He had a blank and a half. He went aggressive to force the blank from Kai. But now he's in the middle. So he has another blank to escape. He goes to try to a blank on the right side. Gets moved in, now he's stuck because he has no blinks, right? This is, again, the importance, going back here, to 1 and 2. Blink usage, recall usage, right? He did have that blink and a half, but he wasn't able to get into a safe enough space. He should have maybe, instead of going forward for that to force that recall, he should have probably played a little bit further back and played more to value his life, get some HP, re uh, reload those blinks, try to get more than just a blink and a half, maybe two blinks, maybe two and a half blinks, and then gone a little bit more aggressive. Overall, like positioning wise, I think he was doing pretty well. He was waiting for his ball to take t tempo as well from him. So he's going, kind of going second tempo. Enemy Tracer's trying to block him. Okay, let's see what's going on here. One point that I did not bring up that I think is really important with this comp, by the way. I also need to mute this. Where is it? Ah, there we go. Perfect. One thing that I didn't bring up that I'll bring up really, really quickly to you guys. If you notice on the board, there is no resources potentially on the field between both teams that will allow him to play very aggressively as long as he's an LOS of the team, right? Look at it. They have Anna and they have Mercy as the heals, right? They don't have Pax with Break. They don't have a Harmony Orb with Zen. They don't have Discord Orb with Zen. Nothing like that could, that could change Tracer duels or not even just change Tracer duels, but abilities like that that could really impact how aggressive tracer can play and how much they don't have to rely on packs right based off this composition both tracers have to rely on packs they need to look around the map see where the packs are and then play around those so that they get hp right because they don't want to take away on his focus from potentially healing hawk or healing gator and you don't want mercy to definitely look at you you want the Mercy to stay on that Pharah as long as possible so that she can keep spamming very hard, either force a duel really hard, or go very aggressive if they have a large advantage, right? So we're seeing that he's playing around, like, some packs there. He has the Mega there. He took it. Again, he's he's letting his ball kind of go in first. His ball is going in. He's kind of playing secondary. Kai is trying to match him. Forced recall right away. He has a blink. He has a recall. I expect him to be going really, really aggressive here. Right now, he's just looking at threats on the side. He's peppering the Pharah Mercy. Of his Mercy, he sees Shu by him, or sorry, not Shu, Iris by himself. You see him consistently doing proactive stuff, though. 
as he's going from place to place, he's never just sitting there and looking around. He's shooting something consistently, shooting the Pharah, shooting the Tracer, shooting a Diva as he's rotating to Eris, right? So he's doing very good stuff. Do I think he's doing great blank usage? I do. I really do think he is. Even though he's at zero blanks right now, think about it. Every time he's had a blank, there's been a purpose to it, right? He's closing the distance on Eris, but he's also going towards terrain, right? If I back up just like two seconds to show you kind of more so what I mean, right? If we look at this, he's shooting, 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 shooting. He blinks to get over the bridge a little bit faster, right? But now he's looking at his surroundings here. He sees where they are. Shoots Kite, now he sees Hawk, he starts going. He has a blink and a half again already in this mid fight. He sees Iris right here. Instead of shooting him right in front, he's going to go blink behind, right? So that he forces Sion to have to, or sorry, Iris to have to flick it over, right? Which will take a little bit of time. But also look to see how he's going to look to utilize terrain, right? He's really close to a corner here already. He's doing fantastic job manipulating terrain to his favor, right? Gets Iris to have HP, gets him to turn. And again, he's doing a really good job of utilizing those blinks. He hasn't been in a very dangerous spot aside from that first fight when he's been low blinks. He's playing very aggressively with this recall. Even though he has no blinks, he's still trying to play an aggressive cut in game. Not able to get away from the fair with pocket. But overall, the fight was usually already over there at that point. No need to worry. That's going to be a reset for Glads anyways. But again, like you're seeing, like a big part of right now his big play with those two fights are this these two points right here, blank usage and recall usage. Now he has a pulse bomb. So let's see how he utilizes this pulse bomb, right? Okay, we see him setting up towards the left side. Use a blink to get in past the bridge. He's looking to potentially go onto Iris there. He's being very patient with the bomb. Gets the stick onto him. Didn't really need it. Mirror ends up getting the kill anyways. And now he's looking for his next target. He's looking to go back up with space. Finish a low HP target. And he's going around the map. Again, he's keeping his blinks. He has one blink right now. Recall usage is about two seconds. He's looking to play around his aggressive timings really, really well based off of his cooldowns coming up. Great kill onto him to finish off a low HP Iris as well. You see, now he went from playing like second tempo there when the fight looks very over he's playing a third tempo and like i said second and third tempo what's the difference between second and third tempo second tempo again you're going based off of immediately after a dive happening right with first tempo being the dive the tank going in the tank taking first aggression second tempo is like you're going in second or like you're looking to go in when the aggression is on someone else third tempo is when the aggression is on everyone else and you're just chilling waiting for them to forget about you and then you're just gonna pop out of nowhere and try to kill something that's exactly what he was trying to do there towards the end of the fight was able to pick up a kill for his trouble based off of the damage that Miro was doing and it's a very big kill as well he got a huge kill onto Iris that means less support for those tanks and potentially for um, Pelican there as well as Masa Masa goes down to Shu and Again, you see Kevster playing and staying alive and being prevalent in this fight, even though his team has lost the last few fights, is very key there, right? Did he get a kill with that sticky bomb that last fight? No, he didn't, but he would have got a kill with that sticky bomb. He landed the stick. He right now has 100% stick rate. Let's see how he does this next pulse bomb, right? We see he's set up close. He has two blanks. He has a recall. I expect for him to wait for them to come into the room before he looks to go for a pulse. You see both tanks are trying to force him out. He backs up with his blanks. I'm waiting for him to have about another blink or a blink and a half up and then try to force to go around. You see that he's trying to go around and potentially get onto the back line through another way. But it wasn't fully required because his team, his specifically his fair mercy, were able to come out on top there. Again, you're seeing every time he's zipping around when he's low blinks, he's going around a corner. He's going around terrain. He isn't looking to do anything crazy. He's not trying to look to ego the team by trying to force a 1v1 in the open. He's reducing his hitbox consistently. And think about this. He's one of the most mobile characters or the most mobile character in the game. Why is he reducing his hitbox so much? It's simple. It doesn't matter. When he has no blinks, he isn't the most mobile character in the game anymore. He's very susceptible to dying, right? So that's why you see him hugging around these corners a lot of the time. That's why you see him going back and forth in and out depending on the space at the control, right? Right now, they're trying to manipulate them to go forward more because he wants to be able to land a pulse. 
Right now, Kai's doing a good job marking him. But you see him, he's posturing consistently to try to go for this pulse. He's forcing Kai to have to look at him. A little bit too much of a stretch there with the bomb there. But again, he's he's putting that pressure still on the side. Goes for the pack. Looks like his team was able to kill the enemy fair and mercy. Now it's all about cleaning up kills around the rest of the point, right? Okay, looks like he's going around to help Shu. Forcing the duel on the Kai. He still has his recall, so going for this aggression is really good. Recalls back into the building, takes the Mega. You have about two blinks alive. You should be blinking back either to the Mega if you think it's dangerous. Yeah, okay, good. And then now you have recall coming back up in a moment. I expect you to try to look for anyone that's potentially isolated. Okay, he goes towards point to just play towards point side. Just the ball because he's low HP, no shields. Goodbye, Gator. Now he has recall back up. I expect you to try to hunt somebody now because it's OT. He go hunts for Kai. Again, he, he has low blinks, but when he has low blinks, he's trying to play the strain. It's a little bit harder to play the terrain and get a lot of value when there's a Pharah above you, but he's still trying to reduce his hitbox for the other characters that he's against there. Again, he's going back. He's not overstaying his welcome. They're just playing more so to capitalize on targets that might overextend while they have the point. Unable to kill. He has a sticky bomb here, so if he's able to get a good stick, he's able to turn this fight. Let's see if he's going to be able to do it. Oh, Pharah kills Shu. Still potentially winnable if he can hit a two-man pulse. He has a one-man pulse onto the ball, able to kill the ball. Ooh, they see nine. Ooh, ooh, that's not a good sign. Um, overall, like, what do I think? I think his bombs have been pretty good in terms of mid-fight. So this, I would say, he messed up one bomb, and that was because he went for a reach trying to go stick uh, Iris while they're trying to walk forward but overall like he you again you see him right like Kevster never feels like he is um I don't believe they play Tracer here if I remember correctly no they don't so something just like to think about with Garden right again like reflecting on Garden looking at Garden because this map they didn't play I wanted to show you the one with the Pharah it's really unlucky because they were so close to pretty much turning that fight. They would have turned that fight in my eyes if they just kept delaying the point there. But the thing to keep in mind is, well, we're looking at Kefster, right? How did Kefster do? Like, did we feel like he was pressure? First fight was the only time when he died instantly that I felt like Glads didn't have pressure. Aside from that, I feel like Kefster always had pressure. He was always doing something. And... A big word that you'll see me use is, aside from these, a big word that you need to understand is this. Proactiveness, right? I use why sometimes with in conjunction, so in uh, relation to proactiveness as well. And why is that? Well, it's simple. If you're being proactive, right, if you're doing things consistently, that means there's a purpose behind why you're doing them. Or at least I would hope that there is a good reason, right? Most of the time, I, I didn't see a poor reason as to why he's doing some stuff, right? I'm not going to go into super, super detail micro and be like, oh, you wasted a blink here. You wasted a blink this fight. You wasted a blink this fight. Overall, blink usage has looked really good. Overall, recall usage and how he played around the recall use was very well done, right? Pulse Bomb did really good with the Pulse Bomb. He consistently pressured. He pretty much stuck both of them, two out of three, which is really good. The other one got, just got eaten, right? Because that was a good eat by Hawk. Aside from that, Tempo, very, very good. Not just playing one Tempo, he's playing two different types of Tempo at the same time. He's going second Tempo and he's going third Tempo. Playing that Lurker role when the team is dead to try to maybe kill some targets that are low HP or isolated. Second tempo when they're starting off the fight and going into the mid fight at the beginning, right? And again, proactiveness, he's always shooting something. He's always playing around terrain, even when he has blinks, even when he has advantages in fights, right? He's always looking for opportunities, always looking for opportunities, being ready to change his style. Very, very good in terms of what you're looking for. He's consistently being proactive, 
making sure that he's doing something or if his first action fails or his first action is positive, it's what's next? What should I do? What can I do? And that's the big thing you need to understand about Tracer. When you think Tracer is a character that you're consistently forced to always be proactive. There's always something new you can do. There's always something right in front of you that you have to decide from. A lot of decisions, right? So you need to be able to identify those decisions and take the decision fast enough or be able to see those decisions in front of you and be proactive enough to do them, right? Can't just hard tunnel on one thing. There's so many things that Tracer can do because she's the most mobile character in the game because she is just such a great character about being aggressive, being passive, Hello doing there. a lot of different things, right? So you need to understand that. You need to be ready to kind of go from there.